Alright, hi everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to go ahead and talk about LT Spice, and it's a simulation tool that I use every day um, in my career. And so, a little about me. My name is Andrea Urueta, and I'm a power supply design engineer for Honeywell Aerospace. And basically, my job is to design circuits and evaluate the risk of failures. And so I'm basically looking for over and under voltages, uh, currents and spikes at certain times within a circuit and much more. And LT Spice is the tool that I use every single day at work. So I think it's really important to be introduced and understood at the college level. And I had an internship during summer of 2017 where I used this tool to visually represent like what I was struggling with and it really um, helped me get more familiar with analysis techniques and just communicating more with my teammates. And so I think it had a huge influence on my full-time um, offer. And so uh, that's what some of my experience is. And then going into my expertise, this is just kind of what I was more familiar with in school. And basically the subjects are ESIN 459, ESIN 325 and ESIN 460 for my upper levels. But I will say that ESIN 214 has probably been the most important class of my college career so far. And I catch myself at work having to go back to notes and practice and fill in those gaps and concepts that I kind of missed while I was in school. And so I hope that learning this tool can kind of give you guys a better understanding um, and be able to grasp things from a visual aspect. And some of my extracurriculars, I was really involved in a TAMU ship when I was a student. I was secretary one year and vice president. I still continue in ship Phoenix where I'm now relocated. Um, and I just wanted to say that ship has taught me all of the soft skills that have been so beneficial at work. And I think as an officer, you really push yourself and you gain value in the sacrifices that you're making. And you're learning so much, especially developing those problem solving skills. And I think it's really easy to sit back and kind of complain about events or um, just, you know, like just kind of um, not really be as active. But I think it takes a lot of courage to be that change. And so I think that's been one of the best things that I did in college and I really hope that you guys run for office and I really commend the current officers right now. And so going into the presentation, um, I'm going to be talking a lot, but it's just going to be in the beginning and it may not make sense right away, but we'll go through a few models step by step. And so first you're going to want to go ahead and open LT Spice from the Analog Devices website. And there's a link here that you can follow. Or if you just Google LT Spice, and it's probably one of the first ones that'll pop up. And there's options for Macs and Windows. And when you open up LT Spice, um, it should be just a plain screen like this, or maybe have something in the background, kind of different versions change over time. But it's just going to be plain, and you can't really do anything with it quite yet. And so what are we going to be talking about today is kind of what is SPICE, drawing a circuit and knowing the key shortcuts and labeling, simulating a circuit in DC, transient, and AC simulation runs. And I'm going to be working through some of the pre-lab 3 problems for ESIN 214 as well as uh, an RC circuit going both through a transient simulation and AC simulation. So what exactly is SPICE? SPICE is a simulation program with integrated circuit emphasis. And so basically it's just a, an open log analog source that's going to go ahead and do a lot of mathematical calculations so you don't actually have to. And there's a lot of different versions of SPICE. And so you might see PSPICE and Multisim and they all kind of um, do the same thing in order to help users uh, model these circuits, but I, I personally think LT Spice is the easiest, and I know it's known a lot in industry, and it's free, so it's very uh, easy to use, and I really recommend continuing on with this program. So starting off with drawing a circuit, you're going to go to File, New Schematic, or click on the New Schematic icon, which is kind of like a piece of paper with a red symbol on it. 
and what this does is this is where you're going to lay out all of your components and so you need to have this open to even get started and I personally like to have my background as white and I, I don't remember what the default is exactly but if you go to tools and color options and then click schematic in the drop down menu highlighted down there you can select background you can select wires and then what you would do is just adjust the color mix to your liking so you can select all the way on red and back on green and blue to zero and then you'll have red wires or red components so it's just up to your preference so I like to have my background white and so I always advise that so drawing a circuit so at the top of your page you should see a whole lot of uh, control icons and they definitely don't make a whole lot of sense uh, at first and so here's kind of just a slide to introduce all that you can do from the icon tabs at the, at the top you can go ahead and zoom in, zoom out, copy and paste, place all of your components, uh, connect with wires, place grounds, labels, move things around, uh, rotate and mirror them so then they're in a better alignment uh, for you or someone else to understand. So starting off with drawing a circuit, you're going to get the components that you need by clicking on the component button, which looks like an AND gate, or by pressing F2. And I kind of like to know the key commands, so like the F2, F3, F4, they all have um, a different function. And I like to, to use those because I feel like it's a little more speedy process. Um, and then once the component window pops up, it's going to look like this. And right here where it says voltage, you're going to be able to type in anything else. So NPN is like a transistor. Um, you can type in capacitor, resistor, and just double click and you're going to be placing that there. Uh, so drawing a circuit, once you, uh, before you place the component, you can always rotate it. And so if you want to rotate it clockwise, it's going to be control R. Uh, if you want to get the mirror image, so just flip it, it's going to be control E. And like I said, you can place the components through the component window by clicking F2. And you can search resistor, but LT Spice has gotten really user friendly. And so if you just hit the R key, then you can actually pull up a resistor, a C for capacitor, L for inductor, and D for diode. And so this is really handy when you're trying to build these uh, very quickly. And to edit the voltages, and current sources, then you can just right click on them and change their um, their values. And by default, the sources are DC. And I'll show you later how to switch to AC as well. And then once you place all your components, you have to get them connected somehow, right? So there's the wire button, which just looks like it's drawing, like a pencil drawing. And so that is um, going to be connecting all of your components and it's basically where the simulator is going to simulate current flowing through and or you can press F3 and to draw that and every circuit needs a ground symbol and you need to have that connected and so ground you can just press the G key or you can um, hit this button that kind of looks like a top it's kind of like a, a triangle with a line sticking out of it uh, if you need to move your component, then there's um, the open hand symbols just to move one thing. And if you need to drag a certain section of your circuit and keep it all connected, then you would move using the closed hand. And uh, again, these have the key shortcuts as well. And delete, you can hit the delete key or F5 and the scissors, and that will take stuff away. And copy and paste and labeling nodes uh, will also come in handy too. And so if you guys uh, need anything for reference, then I can send this out and you guys can go back if you need to refresh. And so when you're using labels to specify units, it's going to be for the examples if you're changing a resistor value from 1 ohm to 1000 ohms, then it can go very quickly by just changing the value to 1k. And so each letter here represents a multiplier of 10 right so k would be 10 to the third power and if you have like a one microfarad capacitor that you want to represent you would just use u and one thing you really want to pay attention to however is 
meg and that's the big one because if you're trying to make 10 to the 6 you do not want to use m because m is already reserved for milli and so you would be really skewing your results that way so always use meg so to draw a circuit like i said you're going to go ahead and place the components and right here you'll see you've placed the resistor tied everything with the wires given them all values ground and then you have these labels here so i'll be teaching you guys how to do all of that so once you draw a circuit, then you can check the SPICE netlist by going to view SPICE netlist. So what is a netlist? It's the way that LT SPICE has labeled the nodes of your circuit. And a node is where three or more components come connected. So right here would be a node. Here would be a node. These three resistors are connected here. And for example, um, zero is usually reserved for ground and what you can see here is that no for example r2 is um, right here and it's going from node 2 to ground and its value is 1k and so you can kind of see how spice has labeled that out for you and i know this is one of the problems in your pre-lab so you definitely want to know how to do this and then we're going to go ahead and go through uh, a DC simulation. And so what this means is that you're sending a direct current signal and there is no fluctuation at all. So if you're sending 5 volts, um, it's not going to have any current messing up to make it 4.7 volts or 5.5 volts. It's always going to stay 5 volts. And it's going to produce all of the values across the resistors or other components that you've placed with the steady uh, signal that you're sending in. And so to do this, you're going to go to edit simulation command and you'll see all of these little um, different types of analysis. And for now, we're just going to focus on the DC operating point. And so it's going to treat capacitances as open circuits and inductances as short circuits. But for now, since we're just doing a resistive network, it's not going to be too complicated. So how do we run this? Um, so you'll see that the operating point command is here, and then when you um, have that, you're going to go to the running man button. And this running man it literally means to run your circuit, and so you're going to do the running man button, or you can go to simulate run to run your simulation. And so when you have the DC operating points, it's going to go ahead and produce um, the values that are across each component. So as you can see, V in is equal to 5 volts and V out, which is what is going across, which is the voltage across R2 and C1 is 2.5. And then you can see the currents going through. And one thing you want to pay attention to is the directions of the currents, because that's going to be labeled to whatever your spice net list, whatever LT spice has decided and it may or may not match the way that you've done it in your homework. And so to make sure you have the right polarities and directions, always double check with that and make sure that, e that you guys are consistent. So now we're gonna do a practice problem for from lab three. And we're going to solve for the current through uh, the 2K resistor here, which is your R load. And then it shows here that you got to do it by hand, but you also have to simulate it. And so the simulation is kind of going to give you guys the answer. And that way, when you're doing it by hand, then you can go ahead and verify and kind of have that double check. So now I'm going to pull up LT Spice. So we're starting off from the beginning with just the plain um, window here. And so first thing, like I said, you have to have the schematic window to actually lay anything out. So we're going to go up here to the symbol that looks like paper. It says new schematic. And you're going to go ahead and open that. And so we have the practice problem. And we're going to have to place voltage sources. So how do you place components? Hit F2. And if you don't want to hit F2, like you can't remember it right away, go up here to the AND gate and you'll select... Um, the same and in the same window will pop up and so I already have voltage typed in here but there's so much more you can look for resistor capacitor um, once you get into more advanced 
things. There's like different op amps and things like that. But for now, we're just going to use a voltage. And so you're going to place that here. And you'll see that it's going to want to place another one. To get out of here, you just hit escape. And now we need to place a resistor. And I like to do the easy way. So you're going to hit R. And then control R to um, rotate it to the way that you want it to be. And then we're going to control R again because we had certain things in parallels and T's. And again. Control R again, Control R, and now we're going to want to put a ground, so you hit G, and it just automatically switches, and we're going to ground, uh, we'll just ground here, yeah. And so now we got to get them all connected, so F3 is going to be the way to go. If you don't want to use F3 yet, and you want to use the drawing the ground wire, that's perfectly fine. Uh, either way, just to get you guys started. And then you can connect through the components, and that will actually still connect everything. And then you're going to want to go all the way out to ground, to ground all these, and here to here, and here to here. And so now we're going to want to put the correct um, voltages and resistances that we want. So V1 was a 3 volt source. Uh, R1 was a 1 kilo ohm source. And even if you do it the long way and do 5100, it will still work mathematically. And you have another 1K, another 3.3K, 1K, and this was a 2K. And in your homework problem, it labeled this one as RL, because this is the load. It's receiving all of the, the output here. And so we can actually change this to BRL. And that's your label there. So um, from here, now we can go to checking your nodes. So like I said, this is a node, and this is a node, because three or more things are connected to it. So we're going to go to view. Spice netlist, and you'll see just the different um, different nodes labeled here. So R three, for example, is going from node two, which is this one, to R to node three, and it is a one k resistance. So right here is what I'm talking about, and R four is going from node three down to zero. Like I said, ground is going to be labeled as zero. Um, and then it's going to be a value of 3.3k. So you can kind of see um, every component you've got here. And so now we're going to go ahead and run this thing. So we've got to go to simulate, edit simulation command. And there's transient analysis, AC analysis, all these different ones. We're going to go to DC operating point. And so this is going to treat every capacitance as an open, every inductance as a short. And to place this, you just place anywhere. Then you can also move this by going back to F8, move it around. You can highlight this over here with F8 and extend it if you have any other things that you need to place in between. And so now we have the operating point. As you see, it's black, and it that means it's an active thing. And then it does not have a semicolon. A semicolon means it's inactive, and then a period means it is active. And so now we're going to run this thing. So I always use the running man. And so the DC operating points, you'll be able to find the current through RL. You'll look in here, the current through RL. This is in amps. So it's a very, very, very tiny amperage, but it's going to be 0.385 or 0.386 milliamps and you want to just verify the direction going back with that spice uh, netlist and you can go ahead and, and do that on your own time so next we're going to go ahead and do another practice problem and so let's start from scratch again this one is going to be solving for the voltage across the 1K resistor. And so we want to start from scratch. 
So we're just going to take the scissors for delete. I did that by clicking F5, or you can click the scissor icon at the top, and you're going to select everything, and there, it's gone. So now going to the next problem. We have another voltage source, actually two of them this time, so it's already on voltage. I have not placed it yet, and so I can do Control R. And you really need to pay attention to the plus and minus signs to get it in the right direction. And we're going to do that again here. Then a ground was over here. And then we had R for resistor. Rotate that. Oops, rotate that there. Place another one here. Rotate that here and here. And I just kind of place them where I think they're going to be because luckily you can move everything fairly easily. So now we're going to go F3 and you've got the wire or here, whichever way um, suits you. So we're going to go across these components, across here, connecting all the way through R5 down to V2. And then this ground is going to go to both voltage sources. This resistance, these resistors are connected. And then from here, it doesn't look as pretty as the picture, but it's really easy to go ahead and fix that. So if you just do F8, then you can move this down and move this wire down. And so now we're back to the homework problem. So you're going to go ahead and change this voltage source to 4 volts. Right click over here to 3 volts. And again, just like what we were doing on the other problem, 5.1k, 2k, 1k, and 5.1k again, and 2k again. And we're going to go ahead and go back to the simulate, edit simulation command, DC operating point, place that, and run. And there you go. But we don't have exactly what voltage is going across R3, but that's something we can measure very easily. And another thing is you can kind of double click a node and see the volts here. And so you'll see that it, since it's connected to ground here, it's going to be zero volts. Um, this one is also still connected to ground here, so it's still zero volts. But if you want to measure across one specific component, then you would see how this um, icon here is red. So this is the voltage measurement. And once you do all the way to the end of that resistor, it turns black. And then the voltage across will pop up and so you can see the voltage across 1k the 1k ohm is going to be 265 millivolts and so that's how you do a dc analysis so next we're going to move on to transient analysis and i feel like all of these fancy names can kind of get confusing and so i always just think T for transient is T for time. So the transient simulation is just how a circuit behaves over a certain amount of time. And so you'll go ahead and select your stop time, your time to start saving data, and your maximum time step. And what this means is that you're going to have your time that you want to stop recording data and your time you want to start and the intervals in between. So if you, for example, wanted to record from 0 to 5 milliseconds, at an increment as with one millisecond, then that would be your time step. So, um, like I said, the dot denotes, the period denotes a running simulation and the um, semicolon denotes simulations that are saved, but they're not currently running. And so in this example here, you can see that the dot op operation has stopped, which was the DC operating point, and they're going to go ahead and run the transient on the same exact circuit. And so we're actually going to go ahead and build 
this RC circuit. So for those of you in 214, you probably have not seen this yet, but in uh, 325, you're gonna have to learn filtering, and that's super important. And so might as well get started with simulating that. So F5 to clear everything out. And what we had before was again, F2 for a voltage source and then escape, then a resistor. I'm gonna go a little more quickly, rotate that, and a C for capacitor and ground here. Wire that together. And now we're gonna change this to a five volt source. This is gonna be a 1k resistor. This will be 1k as well. We'll make this 1u for uh, microfarad. And so now we're going to go ahead and simulate, edit simulation command. So transient. We're going to go stop time, 5 milliseconds. Time to start saving data, 0. And we're not going to put a maximum time step. You don't really have to. That's just if you want really rigid points, but I want it to be like a more smooth curve. And so I'm hitting run. This one popped up, but it's okay. Um, let's do fix the windows that way. And so now this is your um, plot window. And I've, if you can pay attention up here when you're switching between the two, it, the commands change. So some things are grayed out right now and over here on plots, you'll have it now changed to plot settings and a lot of things will be grayed out because you're not in the schematic plane anymore. So if you wanna look at your source here, it should be a five volt line, which is exactly what we get. So we have the voltage at node zero one and then we want V out and V out is going to be a little bit above, I think this is about 2.5 volts. And so we're seeing how it changes over time. But typically an RC circuit is going to have a ramp up, right? So why isn't this behaving the way that we're expecting it? So what you want to do is edit the simulation command and you want to start external DC voltages at zero volts. So what this check mark means is that this voltage source is not going to start directly at 5 volts. It's going to start at 0 and climb its way to 5 over this 5 millisecond period of time. And so we're going to go ahead and run it again. And now it looks more accurate, right? So you'll be able to zoom in here and you're able to see how that voltage source V at node 1, which is V1, is ramping up all the way to the 5 volt potential. And if you press this magnifying glass X, it's going to take away the zoom in that I just did. And now you can kind of see the curve of the RC filter, which is just the um, capacitor charging. And you'll see the capacitor reach its maximum voltage that it's able to hold over the time and then kind of um, have V out there. And another thing you can do is label these. So you're going to label V out, place it up here, and you can label V in, place it here, and escape because it'll try to continue. Run it again. And then if you hit this, now it's going to voltage of V in and voltage of V out. So that's sometimes a little bit easier for me. And now if you want to measure current, let's say you want to measure the current through R2, you'll see the icon changes, right? So instead of this, you are seeing this, which is an ammeter, and that's what's measuring current. And you'll also notice that there is an arrow, so that's the direction that the current is flowing. So this is saying, it's measuring from the um, ground node all the way to V out. That's the direction. And now over here, you have 
amps and you see I through R2 is shown up in red. And you notice that your amps are negative. And so the way that you can just change this to make sure you're getting the right direction, so you want to see it flow the opposite direction, is just multiply this by minus 1. And so you can do algebraic expressions. And so now you'll see that the current through R2 it's actually starting off slow and then builds as well until it stabilizes there. And another cool thing is you can also um, measure the change in voltages, like their ratio here. And sometimes these things can be um, really handy. And one fancy thing that I really like to use and it really helps me take measurements is using the cursors. So if you can put two cursors with first and second, press OK. And you're going to put one just here by chance and another one there. And you'll be able to see at the certain time that it is horizontally. So this is cursor one, which is labeled as one. And it is at 414 microseconds, which is accurate here because that would be 0.414 milliseconds. And you can see the voltage that it's at. And over here, you can do likewise with number with cursor two. And then you can delete traces too. So like this one's not very relevant. Delete this trace. Let's say I don't want um, IR2. But that one's kind of cool, so we'll leave that. So delete that one. And IR2 is going to be stable. Actually, let's go back and put that back. And IR2. OK, delete this trace. And so another cool thing that you can do is you can see, typically, you have power is equal to current times voltage which you can do in here with the ma uh, mathematical like algebraic expression plots. But you can also hold down the Alt key and you'll have a whole nother cursor come up, right? And it's like kind of like a thermometer. And that will, if you click it, that is going to be your power. So you'll see the colors kind of change. So you want to keep track that IR2 is still blue, V out is still green, but now the power through R2 or the power loss to R2 is going to be shown in red. And now you have watts over here. So just keep um, track of those things and use the cursors to help you out. So that is a transient simulation. And now we're going to continue back with the PowerPoint. And it covered all this, all the cool, the different measurements and things. So now we're going to an AC source. So an AC source is completely different than an AC run. And just like I had transient for time, I'll help you kind of remember um, the AC run. But this is an AC source. And so this is going to be changing your voltage source, which we've typically had as DC. And we're going to change it to a sinusoidal wave. And we're going to go ahead and um, produce that. And so you're going to do this by going, um, clicking on your source and going into the advanced panel. So let's go back here. We're going to get out of this plot and make this bigger. And let's click here. And in the advanced panel, we can make a sine wave. And so let's say we have no DC offset and we have a 2 volt amplitude. And let's just say a 1 um, kilohertz frequency and we're going to run this over time still and like how I don't like this label here you can just move it with the F8 key and moving it and it'll still be representative of this voltage source and so by clicking run now we should see V1 turn into a sinusoid which is what we do and it is at 2 volts uh, and negative 2 volts because it's a peak to peak 2 volts. And if you're looking at the period, then it would match 1 over the frequency mathematically. And then we're looking at V out as well. And that will also be a sinusoidal signal. So that's one way that you can represent this. 
So AC simulation is over frequency. And so this is stuff you're going to see. I'm not sure if you hit it in 214, but you're definitely going to see it in 325. And so basically just how transients over time, just think AC is over frequency. And so this is where you're going to get into your dB points, which is like measuring your gain and your phase margins and, and things like that. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do that on the same circuit that we've kind of been messing with here. Uh, so I, I don't want to get rid of the transient run. I don't really have to. So I can go back to simulate and edit simulation command and go to AC analysis. And so the type of sweep that we're going to do is a decade sweep because dB, which is um, a way to represent the gain over a certain amount of frequency, is usually in decades. And for the number of points per decade, I always put, um, just depends on how precise, but we're just going to go 123. That's pretty precise there. And we're going to have our start frequency, maybe like, uh, let's just say 100 hertz. And we're going to have our stop frequency at 1 meg. We're going to use that meg function. And so, as you can see, the transient one is still active because this has not been placed. But now I'm just going to place this, and you'll see that now the semicolon is right in front of the transient and thus going to go ahead and uh, not run. So we're going to run this. Oops, I forgot to set uh, the voltage source. So we're going to go back to a DC value of 5, but the small signal AC amplitude, we're just going to set it for 1. And the reason we're going to set it for 1 is because we're simulating if the DC value had any noise. And I know this might not make sense to 214, but it's really good that you guys hear it early. So if there's any noise, so if there is fluctuation, if this DC value isn't constant, then you're going to want to track that. And that's how we're going to run this. And so we don't really need V in. As you remember, dB is the measure of gain, and V in isn't being amplified or or having a change, and so that's why it's at zero. So we're going to delete this trace. And you'll see the dotted line is going to be your phase, and you will have um, the solid line is your gain. And so you can go ahead and measure the magnitude of that gain and phase at specific frequencies here. And you can actually go, and that's the first cursor, and so you can go to first and second to get two. And that's really handy for doing measurements. Okay, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, right, you're going to want to go and make a small signal analysis. And I think that's a pretty good stopping point for now. I hope I didn't confuse you guys too much, but it's been really handy and I hope that you guys can practice a lot. And I had this kind of like personal slide that I wanted to include of just things I wish I had known in school. And so number one is pain is temporary, GPA is forever, and that GPA is going to be what really opens the doors for you. So really uh, focus on your schoolwork and evaluate your priorities. Schools should be number one, absolutely. Ship is great, friends are great, um, sports are great, but just make sure that school is always your number one priority. And studying effectively. And so studying effectively doesn't necessarily mean studying for a longer period of time. You can be studying wrong longer and it's going to not be benefiting you if you were studying the correct way and for a shorter amount of time. And so studying effectively means being consistent, consistently repeating and the more practice and practice you get, um, the more things you can visualize and the more connections you can make between for example, your homework problems and your models, that just means it's a better way that you're going to remember it and stick in your head. And so you're not studying the night before and forgetting everything on your exams. Uh, the next one is fault versus responsibility. So your education is 100% your responsibility. Your friends, they're going to 
want to help you, but they're not going to be able to do it all for you. Nobody is going to be able to do it for you. It doesn't matter if your professor sucks, you are still responsible for knowing that material once you get out of school. And that's something I wish I had realized um, earlier on. And then C is every opportunity, so take chances. Um, you know, if there's volunteering events, that what's the worst that can happen? And that's kind of how I think of things. What's the worst thing? Is this really going to be that bad if I put in some more time um, to an, another uh, volunteering event or something with school or studying more, going to office hours? Make sure that you're always grasping for growth and just take advantage of the time that you have in school to seize all those opportunities because once you graduate, they're not gonna be there anymore. Uh, lastly, be flexible. Roll with the punches, but don't be too passive. So you wanna go with the flow and don't be really short on temper. Things are gonna happen, things out of your control are gonna happen, but you, like I said, are 100% responsible and so just, adapt well and I think that's what employers are really looking for but don't be passive in where you're kind of just sitting around and doing nothing like oh it's out of my control oh well I'm not going to do anything no always be that active person and be open to change you know everything's gonna change eventually uh, your classes change all the time materials changing and it's never going to stop so the easier the better you get at adapting to things and being flexible the easier your life is going to be in general. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that Honeywell has a component engineering position for full time. And so I really encourage you all to check that out. And if you ever want to reach me, feel free. If you ever, if you like these videos, then uh, I can definitely do more. If you have more specific questions regarding op amps or certain behaviors in other filters, then just feel free to contact me at my email here um, or through Facebook Messenger. And feel free to add me as a friend. Don't be shy. Um, like I said, take risks. Contact everybody because what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to probably learn something. So like I said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And please try hard in school and keep on rocking with Tamu Ship. Right. Thank you.